everybody, it's Robert Dunn from arttop10.com and I'm very happy today to be chatting with Marco Kelly. Marco, hello. Hi there. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good, good. So, so I think uh, you're in your sort of studio, which is... I'm okay. It's uh, another slightly sweaty day here. <laughs> it is another hot one, isn't it? I feel like it? I'm in a different time zone. <laughs> We got yeah, we've got a bit of a lag, but I think we'll I think we'll we'll make it. We'll make it. So so why not um just tell me a bit about the room you're in and, and how you've used all that space. It's crazy. So this is uh, a living room in a one bedroom flat in uh, East London, Dagenham. And what I've done is uh, arranged it so I can use two of the walls, the far wall and uh, the longer wall to work on large canvas when I want. And obviously just the normal kind of things that people do, which is use boards and easels and so on when they're painting on a, on a more reasonable scale. Um, and of course, it's got the general furniture that you might find in the normal living room. Just obviously, when I work, I push it aside and uh, rearrange it. I love it. I think I think it re really shows people actually what what it is like to be an artist, and and I think they probably imagine we're all in these gigantic white sort of studio things, but in reality, it's it's much more like that normally, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's really exactly right. People, everybody I know, sort of makes do with spaces and makes the best that they can. They're very practical, I think, and. Um, in some ways, I think often we, we travel quite light, although we have a lot of stuff around. Everybody's ready to move in with one or two essential elements and then go from there, bring in all the other stuff until eventually, of course, the whole place looks like a tip, but um, it's a working place. <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, I agree. I mean, I used to have a studio uh, down the road from where I live, but it was just such a waste of time and so expensive that eventually it just just taken over a room in the house now, basically. It's a lot easier, isn't it? Yeah, and also I think just kind of having the work around. It's um, so I've got some friends who do a lot of writing, and often they have an ability to live with the writing constantly there. I think if we have this kind of visual repetition around us, it's much more immediate. Unless, of course, you're lucky enough to be one of those people who can spend a lot of time in their in their studio because that's their daily life. No, no, absolutely, I agree. I, I love it. I love it. It's a home because you. When when it's at home with you, you can just wander in and have a quick look and sit around and stare at it. You just got a sort of chance exactly. to. Yeah. So so why why not just start by telling me about that? Yeah, I think, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Why why not tell me about that big one in the background with the pink and the brown people? Yeah, so for a while, the last two years, up until really the beginning of this year, I was looking at a lot of um Renaissance paintings and uh, from sort of the earlier to the end. And I was kind of just going through each, I wouldn't say movement, but each development, just drawing from it, developing something from it, and then making some work of my own. And this is the uh, one that was combining looking at Rubens and, um, and uh, Titian as well. So all the, all the figures are from paintings of that time and it was a case of creating something that has some kind of contemporary feeling to, contemporary to me that mm. of course I mean somebody else might say yeah. quite the opposite <laughs> and um, also you know wanted to learn how to paint on a larger scale but with a certain amount of speed and spontaneity that I have on a, on a smaller scale so so all all the figures are taken out of like those Titian paintings and what have you rearranged them back into a new position? Yeah, that's correct. So they're all groups of figures that somehow interact um, in the actual original painting. And somehow, I've always been interested in, uh, obviously originally, they would draw from life and then take that individual figure and position it accordingly. And often, they would actually trace or reuse the drawing on separate paintings. So you would see similar poses or similar arms and bits of bodies attached to other bits of bodies. So it's a kind of oh. rehashing this technique as much as anything else. Oh, that, that's really interesting, actually. Um, and, and so w w would you say that is the painting finished or is it still sort of on the go? 
that's something I actually found with the larger paintings. Compared with a smaller painting, I've managed to sort of work through in my mind to a finished state. It might take a month or two months of not of working on it, not working on it to get to the finished state. But the larger painting, I find it's a much slower process. Yeah, I guess it's because it's my first plan in a sense. Um, so, you know, the initial parts are planned, but then suddenly mm. elements appear which, for some reason, seem uh, at the moment for me more more difficult to get into and, and uh, resolve. Okay, it's it, it's it's actually really interesting. It's actually quite an interesting. It's kind of quite strange, really, in the you know, the pink and the 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 people that's sort of dancing and fighting and emerging from each other, and there's kind of sort of strange contortions going on. Yeah, that's right. I was going for this um, uh, idea of the conflict between the various paintings I was looking at. So some were, were obviously sort of bacchanalia type of piece, the uh, paintings where there was, you know, the dancing and the feasting. And others were um, sort of, you know, depictions of slaughter, essentially, or, you know, in, in the antiquities. But again, as I said, the positions and the bigger positions often not only have a commonality just because the human body has certain limitations, but because obviously they were taken from set uh, poses. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually quite tricky. So, so could you move around and show us the other one? I think there's another, not quite as big, but another larger one to your right. Is that right? Okay, so there's one, I'm sorry the stuff in the way, but there's one here, this was one of the no. only ones I did, and I was looking at more sort of Raphael sort of um, compositions where there was just a flatter a flatter plane and more a more planned kind of um, uh, composition. Intriguing. So so that one hasn't got any figures in it or has it? It hasn't, has it? It's just yeah, I'll go from this side maybe. Okay. It has one figure here which is sort of suggestive of it. And then as I was saying I have this kind of interest in cartooning and grotesque um, so I was thinking of how to depict the idea of a body without actually depicting a body. So I'll go a bit closer, maybe you can see it's got a bit more of a suggestion of skin to the painting. Yeah, yeah, I, I hadn't realised actually. I hadn't realised. So, so that's that. Actually, if you come back a little bit, I think you might be able to see it better. But but that's meant to be like a sort of skin, sort of weird human thing, is it? Yeah, that's cool. right. That's quite freaky. Yeah, I like the idea of, of shapes essentially being on, um, on, a, on on the canvas or on the paper, which, you know, obviously, depending how you finish the surface or how you put around the um, the shadows, actually then obviously forms the, the object or background that is meant to uh, depict. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. They're, they're both quite, I mean, they're quite different, the two pictures, aren't they? They don't, uh, I mean... Uh, one of them's got the obvious figures, the other's got the less obvious figures. Does it? Do you often make things that are quite different to each other? Yeah, I mean, I think that's more obvious in terms of um, the drawings because obviously they happen more quickly. But I'll just show you one last painting. Might, you might have to censor this one, I mean. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, right, okay. So this, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so it's a kind of... Going, it's a kind of birth, is it? Yeah, and so again, this was the idea. Of, I was looking at many paintings of the Madonna, basically, and um, okay. and she's always depicted either holding the child or being very pious and very far away, removed from okay. you know, the, the, the main event, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. So this was meant to be a more a more earthy vision. Yeah, and also in as much about in some ways about suffering. Um, which you often, and creation, which you often see as an ambiguity in these early sort of mostly Catholic, you know, yeah. religious pictures. Interesting. So, um, so, so, how long how, how long have you been painting for? Have you always been dealing with these big subjects like sort of birth and suffering? I've been painting probably since you know, uh, say the late nineties. And to be honest, the subjects have always, they kind of danced around that, but they haven't quite been involved in that. So um, I've always been interested in these kind of paintings, but I did sort of shy away from it early on. I think 
because have known less early on about this subject matter as I felt it was quite hard to make a contemporary kind of take on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Actually, I, I, I had a friend at um, Sydney and Gills in London Art School, a Mexican friend of mine, and he was always trying to do these big sort of um, paintings that, that picked up on that sort of war and all these sort of suffering and lots of people fighting. And, and, and the irony was he painted them absolutely beautifully. But um, the school keeps saying, but, you know, it's not contemporary. You're doing like a sort of Rubens thing. And he was like, oh, but I don't care. I just want to do this kind of Rubens thing. But, so, I mean, were, were you fighting with that similar sort of issue? Yeah, well, um, I often have wondered about that. I'm Italian, although I've lived here most of my life. Okay. And I think maybe there's just more in the kind of cultural soup that you absorb as a young person. Um, that it's in a way hard to get away from. Mm. And so somehow thinking about art always seems to come from those initial moments. Um, and I don't think it's just, a, you know, talking about it in terms of visual arts. I think it's, it is actually sort of a cultural makeup. That's quite interesting. The school I went to when I was very young, a junior school level, you know, the first years, the first thing we, they, taught, they taught us was, you know, the Odyssey and the Iliad, obviously for children. Well, but when you get stuck at that level and you, you combine that with the, uh, you know, lessons of the catechism at age five, six, seven, it's a very different experience, I think, the one you would have if you were only born in, you know, obviously, say, in the English context or, I don't know, North Germany, whatever. So where, where, where did you go to school then at that age? Well, uh, I, I, until I was eight, I was in Italy. So I would have been in, uh, in, yeah, in northern Italy. That's absolutely, it's quite fascinating. I didn't realise you'd have got that sort of more classical education at that age. Because in, in a way, those things like Ovid and Metamorphosis, they're so formative. We don't, we don't really actually learn them here, I wouldn't say. Um. Yeah, they're, they're more like, I mean, they're taught, you know, obviously as a child, you understand them really as a... As a, as a Table, nothing more. Yeah. You don't get much depth out of it. But I think it's part of, you know, like learning about 1066 here as a child or as a Roman Briton. It's that yeah. kind of initial beginnings to learning about the, the country or the nation or the culture of your of where you are. I think it's really interesting. I think we should all learn those metamorphosis things. I think it'll change everybody quite a lot. Um, let, 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 let's have a look because you just show you showed me just before we started. You showed me these really cool little um, uh, works on paper you've been doing while while you haven't been able to access the studio as much. Yeah, so I got a bit closer to it. Yeah. So there's that one. So what what's that? Is that one of anything in particular? Is it is it abstract or is it related to? I can see like shadows and things in there. Yeah. So again, I've been playing with the idea of um, of flat patches of colour which are shadows, of course, and then other forms which are bodies. Okay. And then sort of flatness to de depict um, other elements, other ar architectural or possible, maybe trees or grass. Um, so it's a kind of figurative painting, but I'm trying to really go as far into a kind of yeah. graphic abstraction, I suppose. So the pink sections are, are meant to be humans or people? Yeah. That's right. So you got kind of fingers, teeth, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's quite, they're, they're, they're quite intriguing, actually, because um, <laughs> once 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 you know the, the the pink bits of the people, they become more and more interesting. Oh, there's like a foot in the background, is it? That's right, in the centre. Yeah, and there's another possible foot her arm here, and sort of dislocation as to what the figure might be. Yeah, yeah. Coming down from behind it, another shape. It's actually quite a bizarre painting. Um, yeah, I mean, in a good way. I mean. yeah. yeah, no, it's not, that's the idea, I think. <laughs> you know, I, like, I like the idea of, um, this is a more recent one where... Yeah. Or, uh, okay. That's, I'll, be, I'll be trying to do... Well, this, um, again, is a pose taken from a Titian and I've taken other figurative elements. Again, if you read the paints of bodies, it's yeah. possibly male. And other elements are just um, abstract patterns to kind of give an idea of distance or yeah. interior, exterior. It's, I mean, you've got a strong contrast between the sort of beautifully painted figure and then the, the other bits, which, which are kind of much flatter. You've got a real 3D and a real flat aspect to it. 
Oh, it's actually quite... I mean, you've got the little hands peeking out. I like the little hands appearing. And I think also with the hands, they kind of give a lot of sense of um, animation and movement in a sense. Oh, yeah, they've like, got a sense of animation. Hmm. Which I think the figure is obviously much more still, um, which, you know, is what happens when you ask somebody to sit still. <laughs> so what gave the idea for that picture? Or did it just sort of fluidly appear? Come, as I said, in the last two years, I've been playing a lot with the ideas of how composition can be um, arranged, rearranged, and, and colours can be much more hmm. um, starkly different, I suppose, rather than carefully combined yeah. you know, and put together. It's intriguing. And obviously, you always have the idea of having things that can be read as grass and sky, so obviously. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know why, but it makes me want to go and do some painting for some strange reason. <laughs> well, <that's good> then. <laughs> It's, it's, um, got, it's, got, it's, got a, it's got a strange freedom to it. Oh, let, let, let's see this one as well. Oh, that's cool as well. I love the black and the pink on the right. No that's cool. So if, yeah, if you move over a little, little bit, um, Deb, we can't quite see the left-hand side of the picture. Yeah, that's it. Nice, nice. Now that one's got like a sort of uh, shadow of a tree coming out of it. I, it's, yeah. it's really cool. I was thinking, I like a lot of the ideas of film noir and um, sort of pre-1930s animation like um, Betty Boop and uh, yeah, Felix. Yeah. Because before that time in America, they, they, I think it was 1934, they um, instituted a, you know, no sexuality or violence or whatever in, um, in the film industry. Yeah, I'm sure. And, and before then, it's noticeable that, you know, especially animation, was not just surreal, but surreal in an, in an adult way. Oh, I see what you mean. And so it was oh, that's quite interesting. It's quite interesting. Did you? Were you inspired by that? You know that the bit of the tree that's sticking out reminds me of um, those pictures by Robin Mason. Robin Mason. I don't know if you know him. He was the head of. He is the head of the City and Guilds of London Art School. He often did all these slightly weird trees with things sticking out of them. Ah, uh, I'll have to look. Oh, um, yeah, I've certainly seen many artists that have inspired me that I've definitely drawn directly from who use yeah. very clean and um, flat shapes to do mm. amazing things. Well, what, what, what I like though is, is you've got like the pink and the black, they're nice and crisp and clean and flat, but then you've got a much looser painted green at the front and the pink at the back. You've got a nice balance of... Um, you sort of painterly and tightness to it. Yeah, I really like, and I think it's much easier to do that in the sense in up, sorry, up to my own personal experience talking about in terms of oil or paints. But I um, was really happy that I could achieve the same similar thing with, um, with water-based um, materials. Yeah, it's quite interesting. It's harder with that. What, what, what were you using? Were you using watercolors or acrylics? This is watercolor and gouache. Oh, it is, yeah. Oh, I love a bit of gouache. Oh, mm. yeah, you get such amazing colours off it. It's so satisfying, isn't it? And that's got such a flat yeah. colour to it, hasn't it? And it's a very... Um, it's, it, it's strange, because even now I'm thinking I'm doing these and eventually I'll make you know, the proper big painting, you know, but in actual fact, I think they, you know, they work as they are, and then the medium is good enough for what it is. It doesn't have to be translated to something else. No, I don't. I don't think it needs to be translated at all. I think it's. I think it's pretty cool as it is. Are, are those meant to be like weird legs on the left hand side? I can't decide if they're legs or asparagus. <laughs> so here. Yeah. Oh here. Oh no, on the other side, the, the sort of white, the white long. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, the long white bits. Yeah, yeah. It's meant to be like a cartoon hand that's sort of painted with a. It's meant to be like fingers, but they're kind of. Um, painted to, to a, sort of give it kind of modelling to it as you would if it was a you know a figurative painting. It's, it's done really nice. So it's in a repetition, obviously, of these. Like. It's uh, it's it's really weird because it's quite. Would you call it surreal? Or? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going for. So here I'm kind of suggesting lips and um, oh, yeah. the sort of shadows are kind of you know you certainly would find in the you know the 1930s kind of surreal. Yeah. Um, and again, I think they would have been really taking a lot 
from the kind of surreal work done in film and photography at that time and, and um, even cartoon animation. Cinema animation, sorry. That's really interesting. So, you, so you're inspired in a way by cinema animation and surrealism. Is that fair to say? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and also because at that time, a lot of the filmmakers, you know, were, were classically trained artists who just happened to mm. go into film and cinema. And so it's a of a closed loop, you know, what they did and how they were trained. Because in those days, we'd be trained in a very, you know, rigorous way. You know, yeah. which we, have, we have a very different practice now. Yeah. And, um, you know, to go back to that and then use it to make paintings, I think, is a sort of and he tying up of the same, yeah. you know, of the same kind of path that they were doing. It's, it's really intriguing. So, so, are there any other things you can show us, in, or is there? Um, I think there was some, just some, just something else I could show you. Oh, cool! Atmosphere. That's really cool. I like the way there. So yeah. Is that one finished, or is that one still? It's not. Yeah, this is finished. It's that's quite intriguing. You know what? The fascinating thing is that is that there's quite um, uh, yeah. The, what's there changes quite a lot from picture to picture, doesn't it? In a way that they're all quite uh, self. -contained. Yeah, that's, a, that's right. I think for me, each picture is the same little kind of separate playful world. It's not a case of doing necessarily a series of like um, that are following the same vain in the sense of style. It's interesting. I mean, do, you, do you think it's because, I mean, I, I, I'm primarily, primarily an abstract artist, but then I do do things that are figurative and mm. then I do all sorts of other things I feel like. But, and sometimes I worry that that confuses people if you've got, if there's a slight inconsistency. But do, do you worry that people would, would not be able to sort of see a brand? Yeah, I think it's right. I think um, there isn't necessarily one that sticks out. Um, yeah, I think I think it's nice like that. I think it's quite interesting because I think as an artist, you should be following your sort of wherever your crazy ideas take you. Really, you shouldn't you shouldn't be trying to create a sort of branded body of work or something. Yeah, I mean, I saw. Um, the exhibition of uh, Paul Klee about years ago, whenever it was, a few years ago back in uh, the Tate. And I, he's not an artist I would normally warm to, to be honest, but mm. I really like the fact that really he did lots of different images on paper and there was something he kept doing. It wasn't necessarily was creating Paul Klee's, if you know. I mean, it kind of yeah. ended up being Paul Klee's by the virtue of them being so many that you could start grouping them. But yeah. in reality, it would go from one to the other quite freely. It's interesting, actually. actually funny, actually, funny you should say that, actually, because I was actually looking at. I've got a, uh, mm -hmm. a calendar of his work downstairs, and I was looking at one of his pictures today and thinking it just looked so relaxed and free, and like he was just enjoying himself mm -hmm. while he was making it. Do, do, do you enjoy yourself while you're making it? Oh, absolutely. The, you know, there are days when I um, sit down. I'm very tired from whatever I was doing before, work-wise. Yeah. And it's a. It's like a you know a coffee that suddenly kicks in at a certain point once you start. I guess it's a bit like going to the gym. You don't want to go to the gym, but once you're there, once you're there, you know, you kind of get taken away from it with it, and um, you get perked. You can feel obviously day, some days are better than others in terms of something working and yeah. or not working. But um, yeah. it's a great feeling, and it is of enjoyment, of course. Yeah, no, it's in it's interesting actually. Oh, yeah, your 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 pictures do have in as a full-on sense of enjoyment to me. So, have, have you got any of the, any, are there any other ones there, or? Yeah, I'll just go through this book quickly, and some look if I oh, have. Cool. Um, or maybe this one. That's a good one, man. So, for a long time I was into, you know, Ralph Steadman and these kind of... I think so. I've heard of him. I can't quite think off the top of my head um, what they look like, but... So, they do very grotesque. I mean, they kind of did Things in the sixties and seventies mostly. Oh, I know what you mean. Uh, Ralph Steadman and um, Ron Sal. You know, it's a kind of political cartoons you would see in the sixties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, sometimes I you know go back to that with pen and ink drawings. Okay, man, absolutely fascinating, absolutely fascinating. How you, how you change quite radically from thing to thing. 
and and also, I mean, you can obviously draw beautifully. And so, but when it works, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're shouting, you're seeing those. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, you yeah, feel like that. That's really cool. I love the yellow in the background, by the way. That's really neat. Yeah, no, it's, um, perhaps it's the one thing that ties all these images together is the sort of yellows and pinks more than anything else. A little yeah. very cartoony yellow and pink. Interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Have you ever had an exhibition of these these works on paper together? No, it's something I, I've been thinking about putting together at some point soon. But yeah, um, I, I like the way they're all different, to be honest. Which, yeah. You know, when you think of an exhibition, and you know, I've certainly done exhibitions where yours. You start choosing things quite carefully, they go together in a certain mm. way, but I must prefer this eclectic nature from um, the way they exist, you know, in the studio or wherever I'm working, you know, they're, they're all very different, they're all next to each other and I see them all the time in that way. They're quite, it's actually, actually really quite, it's quite intriguing. Could show, show us some more. Uh, it's slightly different. Yeah. Because that's what what's on the right hand side? Is that uh, I can't quite work it out. Is that this is on the female body? Yeah. And there's sort of two figures, and that's then there's two... just the uh, yeah elements in between. Because strangely enough, from here, you know, on the right hand side, the the white patch looks like a, a sort of duck's head. <laughs> that's that's going to be the title from now on. <laughs> <laughs> duck's head. Duck's head. <laughs> That's really cool. I, I think these would be absolutely stunning in, in an exhibition because they'd just be so intriguing to go from one to another. And each one's got a kind of weird existence to it. Go on, are, are there any more? Thanks, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so that's okay. Um, that's a good I haven't come back here for a while, so I'm not sure what there is. <laughs> okay, is this one maybe? Oh, wow. That is freaky. What are those, those little fingers shooting out of the eye? <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Oh, and it's got the pink and yellow. Nice. Well, yes, exactly. So, the same colours, but just fun and dry. Uh, oh, this is just uh, sometimes I, this is perhaps one of the not so good ones, as I say, though. just to show you that not everything is rosy. No, 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 but, 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 it, but it's interesting, isn't it? I, I think, I think we're, I'm not sure we're ever very good judges of our own work, whether it's good or bad. Um, because that's quite, that's just as intriguing as the other ones. Especially with the weird drips. Is, is that weird creature on the right trying to catch the dripping paint? Yeah, I was, sort of had this thing as I was drawing the paint, but it's fine. It's how the, how the ink kind of exists with the figure or whatever, you know, as a separate but elemental part to the to what you're doing. Yeah. How do you come up with these ideas? Um, I normally start with some vague feeling of what I'm thinking. Oh, this is a drawing, which hasn't come anywhere. Oh man, freaky. Quite intriguing. So, so what you you do have a, you have a rough idea of what it's going to look like, or or does it sort well, of Rough idea of something, um, usually an element and an overall form. Seeing, so no, you know, a line or, or, or a curve that I think will convey what I'm what I'm feeling. And then um, it's only once you go into it and start thinking how it will actually work together as a picture. Yeah. So in this is how one you know, one curve fits with another. That and still keeping that original feeling of what it is you're trying to convey. That you know, I was obviously takes shape. Oh, it's really intriguing. So, so in a way you Until that last, at least not until you're probably... Go on, go on, sorry, keep, keep going. Well, so it's not until you kind of start working quite a little bit into it that, you know, you kind of have a notion of what it will be. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why I never really pre-planned in this entirety at all. So does does the paint yeah, does the paint does the paint kind of guide? So this it? shows just it's just very. So initially, all my drawings start with very faint paint uh, pencil, and oh, really? um, you know a lot of this just disappears. Perhaps this is a better idea of how the working process is. Intriguing. So, um, they, the, so how even if I'm painting, I would use a very faint 
like a very diluted paint work. Long. So how how long would one of those finished watercolors or or, or uh, water based pictures? How how long would they take to finish? Um, usually just a couple of hours. I kind of all right. Okay. Maybe two days. Like this this one took a couple yeah. of days. Yeah. And but normally, yeah, I start in you know one afternoon and try to finish it, hmm. which obviously also limits the size. And that's all the yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. So just show you. Oh, these yeah, are the early panels of. Um, okay. Taken from. So this was early last year. I was doing this kind of work. I still kind of do it every now and then as well. Okay. Intriguing. So you've got quite. Yeah, it's it's quite a fascinating. I just think it's really interesting the different the different kind of things you produce. And would you say that? Would you say they all had that? But they all have a sort of theme of sort of surrealness to them, do they? Yeah, and also um, how the body and figurative and, and you know other elements come come together to make an image, which yeah. has there's a bit of sexuality, a bit of violence, and a bit yeah, of yeah. memory, perhaps somehow forming a composition. Intriguing. What about the one just above, uh, the higher up, um, on your right? Oh yeah, yeah. That. Oh, this. Yeah. Well, this was. Well, this was an early version of, of the the bigger one. Oh, okay. So I, did, I was playing with these. It was from a composition from a Rubens, and so obviously he puts the bodies together in a certain way and creates yeah. this composition. But I was trying to find little elements in this this sort of way of looking at how. Um, two figures that interact in one way in his paintings can be made to interact in a slightly different way. Yeah. It's fascinating, fascinating. Because then you've got that crazy, like, cartoony... So in, in the painting, this is much lower down, this figure compared to this one is, is about here. Yeah. But you can kind of see that the lines obviously continue. And if, if you change it, you can you can pull them together and... and um, Sort of make them correspond in a, in a more more intimate way. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. Yeah, and that's and that that one with the extraordinary arms. Are they arms? No. This. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a male figure and a female figure. Yeah. And um, I think it's a rape of Sab Sabine. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Well, no, it's it's um. It's it's when uh, Herod gets the young the little children yeah, killed. Exactly. It, it, one, it's one of those anyway. So obviously there's lots of figures contorting all over the place. Yeah, man, absolutely fascinating. I've absolutely loved looking at these. We 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 better sort of begin to round it up. Is 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 there anything else you wanted to just sort of explain about the work? Um, I think yeah. I mean that's it. Really. It's just eclectic in nature. I realise that, and sometimes. You know, the more I get locked away here, the more I get involved in thinking, well, I'm, you know, the painter within the environment of the painting, so sometimes I'm, I'm there yeah. in a not direct way. But um, that makes me work of, think of people like Philip Guston, obviously people who work in that kind of tradition as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. yeah. No, I, I think it's absolutely fascinating, actually. And, and weirdly enough, although I'm primarily an abstract painter, just really makes me want to go and do some painting just on a paper and like that it just looks very much it seems really inspiring to go and just do a picture uh, well thanks i'm going to say it's usually abstract paintings that make me carry on and inspire me as well although i've never had the inky to make a very very elemental abstract painting like um yeah some wonderful people i see do yeah no it's really cool i've, I've really enjoyed chatting and i, I would love to see uh an exhibition of all those weird watercolours. I think they'd be absolutely extraordinary together in a room. Oh. That would be cool. Nice, I'll right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. anyway, okay. <laughs> I'm going to say cheerio, cheerio, Marco. Thank you very much. Thanks, you. See you around. Bye. Bomb buckler.